Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Marshall Kramer Show. I am Marshall Kramer, and this is my show. Uh, the place where I do my stuff and just kind of talk about my life. And, um, you know, what's going on in my life today? What's going on in your life? Is your life doing well? Are you guys doing good? Um, no one will leave anything in the comments, but if you want to, drop in the comments. How's everybody doing? I hope everybody's doing good. Um, I don't know where you reside geographically, but here in central Minnesota, it's getting a little bit warmer. I know we got some cold stuff coming, but it's been getting really sunny, uh, you know, getting rid of those clouds, and God, it just makes me feel good. Getting that sun just makes me feel good, and that kind of ties me into my first topic of the day, uh, you know, again, talking about myself, talking about my life a little bit in an anecdotal way to, you know, hopefully connect with you, keep you a little entertained, and then, I don't know, maybe help you out, I don't know, maybe we can connect, whatever, that's basically the purpose of the show, but um, this is an, um, an anomaly uh, that a lot of people deal with, and I've actually talked about many times before, and I've read on stuff, and I've, I like to talk to people about and ask them, but it's that difference between the morning and night, so... In my life, the one thing I've really been noticing recently, again, I've been noticing all my life, but right now, this is the one thing I'm kind of, the weakness that I'm kind of trying to target and trying to figure it out, trying to fix it. But it's that difference between the morning and the night. And dude, I wake up in the morning, I can feel hope, you know, happiness, energy, um, um, you know, mystery. I'm excited about what's going to happen and, you know, just all these different things, faith. And I just, I feel very good. And I'm ready to like, I'm alert and I'm ready to get out there and uh, do stuff today. I'm ready to work. I'm ready to, you know, get towards my goals. I'm ready to conquer some stuff, ready to check off some stuff. And, um, but then during the evening, it could be literally the exact opposite. I could be absolutely dreadful, absolutely no energy, super tired, um, moody, um, fretful, anxious. I'm like fretting about all these fucking things, man, that have n no need to be worried about. It doesn't even deserve my energy or my thought, but it's just like, I don't know. It's just, and it's just, the, the, the nights can be absolutely horrible. That's the, that's, I don't have FOMO in the morning. I never have FOMO in the morning. I get up and I get to work and I get shit done. But when it starts to become nighttime, FOMO happens and regret and, and anxious thought, all this bullshit mumble jumble. And I'm just trying to like figure it out because again, I've dealt with it forever. And I'm going to show a quick cl a clip here um, from The Fighter and the Kid, which is a, a podcast done by Ryan Callen and, and, and Brendan Schaub. But there is um, a clip here way back in the day with uh, the comedian Tim Dillon when he was on it. And they were kind of talking about the same thing. Um, I'm just going to insert that clip uh, here before I continue talking about it though. At night when I, there's nothing to do, that's when I'll, I'll be like, maybe I'll drink all the wine. Because the day makes you feel, the sun makes you feel good. Yes. See, I, I work so much during the day, by the time we get to night, I'm pretty chill. You're That's right. the whole move, because night is where the anxiety comes. If but you, not if you exhaust yourself. No, you have to be exhausted. Yeah, have to be exhausted. I've been working out twice a fucking so, yeah. day, and yeah. I, I get so tired. It's not just me. I, Again, I've talked, I, many, I've talked about it on the show before. I've had people talk about it before, talk about it with my friends. It's just an interesting thing. It's like, you know motivated mornings but then absolutely dreadful evenings and uh as you see in the video there they kind of said something about you got to be exhausted like you have to absolutely exhaust yourself otherwise you know you want to have the the movie you want to have the burger the chips you want to just sit around with the beer you want to smoke you know all these different things that sometimes you know i shouldn't say you that's what i feel and that's how they feel and other people i talk to feel it's odd it's, it's like really weird and um but um you know logically thinking right it's what they said you got to be exhausted so what does that mean does that mean literally depleting all of your energy um you know to the point where it's just you have no th you don't even have energy to have thoughts you don't even have energy to be anxious and you just gotta literally zonk out i don't know maybe i mean it sounds like a logical thing to say right you have to you have a certain amount of energy each day and when you use all that energy that's when you're going to go to bed so you might as well use all that energy use absolutely every one of it otherwise if you don't use it all you're gonna be laying in bed worrying about stuff you're literally be laying i literally lay in bed sometimes if i don't use all my energy or you know in theory here if i'm have the anxious thoughts worrying about something i did in second grade you know i'm worried that i i'm like dude i should not have taken her cheez-its she knew i took her cheez-its you know it's like all these fucking like anxious thoughts that just flood to me you know when i'm not as they said as they put it you know exhausted but um i like that thought and it's a very logical thought another um if you if you know joe rogan him and his buddies do uh the sober october thing and i remember them talking about it a long time ago whatever they said they said something about like during this sober October month, they have a challenge where they go sober for the entire month of October and they do big fitness challenges. They try and exercise as much as they can and they, you know, compete against each other. And the one thing they said was that like their anxious thoughts 
were gone. You have absolutely no energy. He's like, I was working out all day. I was working out five hours a day, six hours a day. My body was so depleted. I didn't have time to fucking worry about any other stuff. I had no time to worry about drama. You know what I'm saying? I, I was about to get snapped by a 500-pound bar over my back. You think I'm going to worry about your drama? So I think that's an interesting thought too. You know, it's, it's, it follows that logic. But I also don't like that too because... Every day, like every day, is, is, is life that much of a battle? Maybe it is. I don't know. But that every day you have to fight and deplete every single one of your calories, every single one of your energy, so you're ready to like literally just pass out and zonk and go to bed? Or, or is that term of being exhausted mean you accomplished everything? Like you checked off your list. You woke up in the morning or even the night before. You made a to-do list for this day. You woke up and you conquered that. You did, you did your workout. You know, you went to work, you cleaned your house, you know, you did all these things that you wanted to do, you accomplished, and now you can feel at rest. You can let your parasympathetic nervous system, right, the, 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 the part of your nervous system that's responsible with relaxation and sleep, you can just let that kick in, and, you know, you feel good, you feel fulfilled, which is the best feeling. Maybe this feeling of exhaustion is a feeling of fulfillment. And maybe we associate with exercise as that's just an easy example, you know, physical, physical expenditure is an easy example. Be like, you know, just, you know, work out. But it's, but we don't, they don't talk about, you know, is that exercise is fulfilling in itself. It's not just depleting your energy. It's not just exhausting. It's fulfilling to the human mind. You, you feel good. And um, with that, I was talking to my friend, a very good friend of mine recently, and he was saying that he was telling me how he's getting back in the gym and uh, he hasn't really worked out in a while. And he's like, oh, this time the best thing is, you know, I went in there with somebody and he's showing me around so I don't have to worry about anything. I just do, 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 do. And he's like, Marsh, you know, I feel so much better. I feel so much better. And I go, exactly. You feel better, right? He's like, yeah, man, I just feel good. I feel, he's like, I, I, everything about it. I just feel really good. And I'm like, um, yeah, man, um, you know, fuck the muscles, fuck the strength. Not that, you know, you need to F them. I love them. I love a good muscle. I love a good, good uh, strength showboat. But, um, you know, the mental health aspect of exercising is like super crucial. You know, it's, it's, it's fulfilling. It, it, it gives you self-confidence, self-esteem, you know, not even just, again, in the physical nature of having bigger shoulders and a broader chest and, and standing, you know, or, 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 you know, you just have confidence. I don't know. It's like a chemical thing. Like, you know, we've always said before, you know, there's dopamine and serotonin releasing. So it's like working out just makes you feel so good, bro. I remember when I used to, work out back in the Dizzy, man, with my, with my buddy in high school, he, me and him used to say that it doesn't matter what mood you walk into the gym with, gym with, when you walk out, you're going to be floating on cloud nine, you're going to be high, I mean, it's a drug, it's, you're going to be high, you're going to be feeling good, you're going to be feeling very fulfilled, euphoric, X, Y, Z, and um, as he was telling me that, I literally was like, you know, yes, yes, the mental health aspects, yes, I mean, we're creatures, not, don't just use your, don't just think of your dogs, you got, if, you, if, 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 it, if you have a dog or you're a dog owner, you know dogs, especially is, you know, the younger they are, it, even when they get older, I guess. We had dogs till they were 15 still walking, but they need to be walked. They need to be let out. They need to have room to play and expend all of their energy. We're the exact same way. All life is. You need to use that. You were built to move. We're built to do that. And now our lives are getting, you know, easier and easier, especially physiologically, right? So we move a lot less. So we got to interject that stuff. Back in the day, Back in the day, you didn't have to exercise because just living life, goddamn, was an exercise. My, my, even my grandpa, he, the life he chose, he was a farmer. He woke up every morning. He took, you know, buckets, uh, five-gallon buckets of corn, you know, fed cows, always walking around, you know, checking things, X, Y, Z, climbing up and down ladders, climbing up and down grain bins, just always moving, you know. You don't need to exercise. But now we're so, our lives are so, you know, they're easy physiologically, you know. They're easy. Cars will get us anywhere, you know. Um, we got washing machines to wash our clothes you know we got big bobcats to scoop up dirt we don't need to use our shovel so we have to interject we have to we have to create gyms we have to go to the gym and create exercise because we don't have it in our, in our daily thing and you know i find that i don't find that bad at all i love that i love that we have the option and the privilege to interject exercise you know and physical struggle in our lives because we have become so technologically advanced that you know um it's easier for us, but it's when I forget that, that it gets bad. But, um, 
what I was saying to him when he told me that about that mental health stuff, it just took me, it was like a flashback. It was like deja vu from my first year that I was in San Diego. And uh, I, one of my best buddies there, he did the same thing. Apparently he never really worked out a lot in high school. And then he really got into working out. And that's what he said too. He's like, you know, not that he didn't, not that he didn't just lose weight. He did lose weight and he looked great. But he's like, man, just like mentally, I feel so good. And maybe they're all connected, right? Maybe getting a bigger chest, getting a bigger shoulder, it makes you feel better about yourself, whatever, X, Y, Z. But it's just so cool, you know, the mental health aspects about it. Like I said, just talking, moving, getting out, exercising, accomplishing goals, checking off things and feeling fulfilled. I was saying the same thing to my mom today. I was dropping her off at the airport and we were, I was talking to her just about this stuff. <clears throat> and that's what she was saying, you know, healthy diet, X, Y, Z. And then, um, you know, movement, walking, you know, she loves to walk the dogs around the neighborhood, stuff like that. Moving. She just feels so much better than on days she doesn't. And, um, I remember once hearing something again, I'm not, uh, maybe I'll interject uh, some sort of science in it during the edit, but right now I don't have anything. I can't pull anything up, but I remember hearing once that, um, when you exercise chemically in your body, the stuff that you end up releasing makes you not crave the shitty stuff. It makes you not crave booze. It makes you not crave chips. And if you think about it, right, you think about that stuff, it, it's associated with your body feeling poopy. So then all of a sudden you start exercising, your body feels really good. No, no shit. Your, your body is probably be like, nah, we don't want you know, potato chips, you can give us some potatoes that you make in the oven or the air fryer, you know, you can give us a steak, but we're not going to take a cake. You know what I'm saying? I think that's actually interesting if, if that's actually true. So <laughs> welcome to my off day. I was editing this podcast and then I thought about this and I actually did want to pop up some of the articles that I was reading before. So I did do some more research on this topic. This phenomenon on more exercise equals a decrease in the appetite for these shitty foods. So there was a bunch of studies. If for you just listening, I'll talk about it. But if you guys are watching on YouTube and stuff, I'll pop, I'll pop up all these different studies and what. But there were a bunch of studies that prove this, that prove the correlation between, you know, the more exercise someone does, the less their appetite is for these, um, not only crappy foods, but crappy behaviors and bad behaviors, X, Y, Z, blah, blah, blah. However, old scientific proverb, if you know, is that correlation does not mean causation. So I found a few more studies that, do, that dove into what they think maybe is the causation of, of this phenomenon. And these guys specifically focused on the um, psychological side, the mindset side of this, right? So there's a few studies I found, but I'm going to talk about one specifically. And this study was based on um, a small group of 56 women. And the instructors told these 56 women, half of them, they told half of these 56 women to go run a mile and go out and exercise. Go run a mile and then come back told the other 50, the other half the exact same thing. Go out and run a mile. Go out and run a mile. Have fun. Go out and enjoy it. Go out and run a mile and come back, you know? Afterwards, their study concluded and their, their, their data showed that the women, the half that, show, that, that thought of the mile as exercise, as, you know, a punishment, as a challenge, they were the ones far more likely to reach for these foods, bad behaviors, and therefore consuming more calories, you know, X, Y, Z, and not having the health outcome that they all want. And so it's very, 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 very interesting, you know? So it's maybe if you go into it, it's all about how you think about it. So if you think about it, like I used to think about it and still do think about it. I think about it as a tool. I think about it as therapy. I think about it as, you know, um, you know, not only exercise, but training and training my body, training my mentality, training my, you know, emotions, all this different stuff. It's, it's hard. It is hard work. I get that, but I like it. I like that hard work, you know, especially, you know, now less than ever, <laughs> you know, but when I was a junior and senior in high school, freshman in college, oh my God, it was my thing. It's all I, it's all I wanted. That was the only drug I ever cared about was the gym. Oh, that's the only place I needed to be. I felt depressed without it. I felt, I felt uh, low without it and I was high with it. Oh my God, I just came out feeling very, 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 very good. But that's interesting the thought that, um, you know, it's maybe not the chemicals, like I was saying, you know, it's maybe not necessarily that you, you start, your body starts not craving the stuff, you know, biologically, it's just like your mind and you're like, you know, I did really good today. Kind of like what I was saying about, you know, kind of what I, I was thinking about with, um, you know, you know, 
if you feel, if you feel, if you feel good about it, you know, you, you want to keep continuing that. You know, I feel good, man. I kicked my ass. You know, I don't even keep kicking my ass. I'm going to keep, you know, doing the good stuff. You know, I did the workout, so now I'm going to do the good diet and I'm going to have good sleep and it's all going to lead to a healthier body, X, Y, Z. So I just thought it was, I thought, I thought that was really cool. And uh, speaking about like myself in high school and when I really, 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 really liked it, I was, um, you know, going back to the guy I was talking about earlier about him getting back into the gym. And yeah, I did share that he mentioned, he shared that, you know, he really enjoys it this time because he has somebody there that has been there for a while and knows what he's doing. So he can just follow him, which is super cool. It makes it a lot easy. makes it a mindless effort. He, he can just, you know, follow instead of, you know, thinking, have to be like, what's going on? But he goes, Marsh, I lift for like, I work out for like 45 minutes, but he's like, I'm there for two hours. And I go, oh, I'm like, you, you talking? He goes, yeah, you know, there's three of us. So we kind of like cycle around, you know, we, we move a little bit slower, but we're talking. When one person lifts, the other two guys are talking. And I go, <sighs> made me emotional because I was like, damn, bro, that's exactly what my entire sophomore, junior, senior year, freshman year of high, call, sophomore, junior, and senior year of high school and my freshman year of college, that's all it was, was just, it was my social outing. It was my bar. That, that was my bar. That was my frat. That was my uh, sport. It was hanging out with people in the gym and, um, you know, working out for being in the gym, not working out, being in the gym for five hours a day, four hours a day, you know, people thinking you're absolutely crazy, but it was like, Hey man, I wasn't crazy. It was just, that's the place that made me feel good. It was not exercise. It was not a challenge. I know you, <laughs> maybe you, you, you know, these people were thinking that I walked in there and I was leg pressing or squatting for five straight hours. Not even close to the truth. You know, it was, it was exercising for two hours, which is still a lot. But uh, those other three hours of just conversation and camaraderie and, you know, it was my social life. So, and then again, too, when I was in it on that time, during the time of my life, those four years when I cared about lifting the most is also the time that I cared about my health the most because, you know, five hours a day and then you add on school and I, and I you know, junior and senior year of high school, freshman year of college, I had work too. You, you put all that on, I got three, two to three hours um, of free time a day. Marsh was not, at that time, Marsh was not going to waste it on <laughs> a good old scotch or uh, um, Cheez-Its or a Flamin' Hot Cheetos or a good steak and shrimp. But that's what he would do. No, that's what he would do. <laughs> he would do steak and shrimp, but um, whatever. So, interesting, psychology. So, I don't know how, how, how you can do that for yourself, but... Um, I'm going to start doing that for myself, and maybe I'll talk about it on the future episodes. I'm going to try because I, right now, a lot of the days, right, I try and work out six days a week, five, six days a week, and, and you know, two or three of those days, maybe even all five or six, <laughs> if I'm being honest, um, they feel miserable. They feel like work. It feels like a, a punishment. It feels like I'm punishing myself to go work out, but... I'm going to trick myself or I'm going to, I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to do a lot of trial and error. Maybe I won't talk about it for a while, but I'm going to try it. I'm going to try it out to, 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 to see how I can maybe tap back into that mental side of it, enjoying it and seeing it as a release and seeing it as therapy, seeing it as fun, seeing it as my social life. If that's what I'm looking for, if in that, you know, it doesn't need to be a social aspect in order for it to be great, but I got to get back to that or I'd like to get back to that. I don't have to do anything I want. Either do you. So I did reach into that. I did look up and I'm glad I shared it. But um, I'm not going to bother you anymore and back to the show because maybe even not just physiologically, biologically, you know, even mentally too, right? I just, like I said earlier, I almost died today, right? With a, with a hundreds of pounds of weights on a bar on my back and I'm going down squatting and anything and anytime anything could snap, break, chop my head off. Like I put my body through the ringer and I feel good about that. So no. I don't want to have a beer. No, I don't want to have a cake. No, I don't want to have all the shitty stuff. Like, what is that doing for me? I just, I just kicked my ass. And now this shit's going to kick my ass. Nah, man. So, I don't know. I feel good about that. But, um, mornings versus nights. Yeah. There is merit to it. And maybe it's the fulfillment thing. Maybe it's the check. Again, I'm still in my own hypothesis of it. And I'm still in my own <laughs> trial and error. But, um... You know, I've been doing more late night editing or editing till I'm getting really tired, you know, or doing DoorDash. And if you know, if I don't have editing, I go and do DoorDash and then DoorDash till the evening and then come back, maybe edit a little bit or, or go DoorDash and then go and do the treadmill for 30 minutes. You know, don't come home till 930, 945. Just, you know, 
feeling accomplished. And, and I don't know, to be honest with you, I haven't felt that exhausted. So going back to maybe even more of my point, maybe this is just for me. Maybe, maybe some people have to be physically exhausted and other people, you know, feel it's, you know, fulfillment and mentally drained, feel like they accomplish tasks. I don't know. Just talking out of my ass here, just shooting the shit. But for me, you know, doing that work, it feels really good. And it makes me just feel better. I go, um, I enjoy being home more. I enjoy laying in my bed. I enjoy actually watching something as I'm going to bed, you know, versus not feeling, versus feeling guilty for doing it because I didn't do shit. So then of course, if I'm sitting there, I didn't do shit all day. I pull up my um, Netflix that I've been watching for the last few hours and I go, now I walk upstairs and go to bed and I watch another movie to fall asleep. Of course, I'm not going to feel good. Of course, anxious thoughts are going to be flushing through me. What did you do today? You don't have any excuse to feel good, Marsh. You have no reason to feel good. I mean, you should be feeling like shit. Otherwise, it may be, maybe your, your brain isn't working well if you're not feeling like shit after a day of doing nothing. Right? So I don't know. Maybe it's one. Um, maybe it's the other. Back with that, right? Recently, been feeling better. You know why I've been feeling better? Not just with the mornings. Why are my mornings feeling good or better? Why am I waking up feeling, re uh, you know, rejuved, re re um, reinvented and rested and, um, and, and very, very, very well rested. I don't know why, but my, my fucking phone just went off from a message of my buddy, um, my best friend who messaged me this morning, six hours ago. And, um, and uh, yeah, so I'm gonna tell you this funny story. I had my buddy here yesterday, right? So I might even show you some video, but over here is my fucking, um, family room, my living room and I'm sleeping last night, right? So I had my buddy over and there's a couch and then right on the left side of the couch, right there is a chair, right? It's a typical setup for a living room. So I'm laying on the couch on my side. I'm in my robe. I'm, you know, the movie's ending and he's on the chair. And it's pretty cold in my house. You know, I keep it pretty cold. You know, I'm pretty frugal, right? So I'm all dressed up and I have the one blanket on me too. And I'm sitting in there and I'm like passed out. I'm like passed out. This guy keeps talking, talking, talking. I love him. He just keeps talking my ear off. And then eventually I just fall asleep. And then I wake up like a little bit and I see him and he's laying on the chair, just like rolled over, just like hands like crossed because he's just so fucking cold. You know, that stereotypical shit. You go to a friend's house and give you a place to sleep, but no blanket. And I just didn't, I wasn't thinking I was stupid. And uh, so I'm laying there on my side sleeping. I see him, I see him struggling. I just fall back asleep. And I go back to sleep for like another 30 minutes. And then I get woken up to this. What do I get woken up to? I get woken up to like feelings of like friction. And I, and I kind of like open my eyes a little bit and like look down towards my toes, which would be looking, you know, at the chair too. And I just see my blanket inch by inch, slowly but surely, moving away from me, just like slowly manipulative. And I look back and I just see his hands. He's over the chair and he's just, you know, he knows he's, he's doing it so slow. He knows what he's doing. And he's just taking my blanket away from me. I'm so fucking pissed. Uh, and then, oh, no, I, I wasn't pissed. I was, I was laughing and I was in my rope. So I thought it was so funny. I mean, this man was over there struggling all night, freezing for hours. And then finally, he probably falls asleep a little bit, wakes up and then gets absolutely pissed because there's no blanket, reaches over and tries to find it on me. Then I asked him in the morning, I go, hey man, um, the only thing I thought was funny is that uh, my blanket was gone. And he's like, oh, it me, man. I'm like, my blanket was gone. He goes, what do you mean? I'm like, you took my blanket. He goes, what? I'm like, you literally reached over and took my blanket. He goes, I really must have been out of it, man. But um, no hard feelings. I'll, I'll, um, I'll, um, I'll let him go on that. But anyway, my final note before I, I said on, before I got on that tangent, telling a story about that, man. What are you doing over there? Why is your, your leg? He just, he just walked in. He just got back. Um, is your leg fine? What are you doing? Why? Too much humping? What? No one can hear you, so. All right, so what I was just saying, what I was saying was, why has everything been going so good? Why have I been feeling so good? And again, why am I waking up rested? You know, routine. And I like back to a routine that works for me. For so long, you know, maybe it's like friendship and like social stuff. I desperately want like a social, you know, I'm young, 23 years old. And I definitely like want a social life. So sometimes I let that want become my deepest priority and then it ruins all my other things. And then you get no sleep. You know, I get a lot of regret. I get a lot of anxious stuff going back to, you know, you know, sitting up late at night, Sunday nights, Monday nights. <laughs>
I felt like I did nothing all week, all weekend, and then partied. I'm anxious. I'm super fucking tired. I got the moves like we talked about before, you know, the alcohol is depleting me. And I did nothing. Then, of course, I'm anxious and I can't fall asleep Sunday and Monday night because I'm like, what are you fucking doing with your life? And again, another, another thing with that is that when I get into the social life, the people that want the social life, the people that live in the social life that I think I want, the way they think about things is not necessarily the way I think about things. And when, you ha- when all I do, I'm, I'm going to speak for myself here, when all I do is hang around people that think of ways different than me, it makes me feel crazy. And it definitely makes me feel weird. You get called weird. And I'm okay with that. I definitely like hanging out with people who think differently than me every now and again, you know, a third of my time, a fourth of my time, but not 100% of the time. Because then they think this way and that's not the way I've ever thought and I don't think that's okay or I don't think this is cool or all these different things. And then, you know, when I make my world so small and I'm not expanding, I'm not meeting new people, then, you know, I feel crazy or I feel weird. And it's about finding your people and, you know, that's my only message with this one. That's my only message with this is that, Dude, your people are out there and social media should, should, should show you that, you know, and, and trust me, I, I, I talked to my friend of mine, he's a nice guy, but I talked to him pretty often about that. And he's like, you know, he's trying to, he goes to all the different places, goes to college here, goes to work here and he goes, yeah, I just haven't found anyone that does, you know, that likes stuff like me or, you know, that wants to really do this or that, you know, I'm like, of course not. Like, especially what this guy wants is like of the one percentile. I'm like, you, then you have to find 1% of the people, man. I mean, there's 5.5 million people in Minnesota alone. I mean, what is that? Like 55,000 people? It would be a, would be a 1% of it. Whatever, you know, there's, there's a small margin. <laughs> That's one in 100. You got to find that one in 100. And, you know, whatever your one in 100 is, everybody's different. But, you know, your people are out there. And, and knowing that for me, rekindling some other friendships with people who think a lot like me and then, you know, catering my social media intake towards people that think like me. Because again, social media can be a bad spot for myself too if I get off the wrong track. But if I cater it and the algorithm finds stuff that makes me feel good, you know, I'm seeing other creators that are thinking the exact same way I'm thinking. Again, what I've talked about with the show before, be somebody you wish you had back in the day, you know, when you needed it. So there are so many people out there that are just like you, just like me, and then remembering that and finding them and talking to them, it makes me feel sane. And again, they might, they're probably not your neighbor. They're probably no one in your town, but they're out there and they exist. Okay, the last thing I want to talk about is, quickly, it's competition. So what even made me in the first place, what was my propulsion besides the anxiety that kicked my ass back in gear from being the, the, the piece that I was being for many years, you know, this, this lazy content guy. And it's competition. Dude, something I shied away from from, from the last few years of my life because, dude, all I cared about was love. All I cared about was bringing everybody. All I cared about was X, Y, Z. You know, was, was, was everybody coming together and, you know, not being mean, kindness, how, love, love, heart, X, Y, Z. And that's great, great stuff. I'm not trying to throw that away. But um, we're wired. We're in humans. Life. Life in itself. Like legitimately, you being conceived is a competition. Which sperm of the millions is going to be the one that's going to fertilize that egg? It's competition at its core. And Jesus Christ, can competition be not just NOS? It's not something that's going to give you that extra boost. I'm talking goddamn fuel. Load the spaceship with the rocket fuel. That can be your gas. But again, me trying to worry about my withdrawals, not my withdrawals, me trying to worry about my drawbacks and my, my, um, my bad sides. I can easily get very dangerous with that when I get super competitive, when, the, when I let that competition guy, when I let that competition mark, marsh rule over, oh my God, it could be the worst because I don't want to hang around people unless you're trying to make videos, unless you're trying to, you know, do whatever I'm trying to do towards work, unless you're trying to work out X, Y, Z, let's try to have a great conversation, trying to podcast, whatever, you know, um, I have a lot less sympathy and empathy for people because I'm on my own track. You know, I'm just literally, it's, you know, talking again with those blinders I put those blinders on your feelings and your worries are not in my line of vision. I'm worried about myself. So screw you. I'm trying to do my own thing. You know, I'm trying to be at the top baby. And you know, and um, so it's kind of that, it's kind of that duality. It's that balance because I don't want to throw it away like I threw it away for years. So it's like, fuck competition, guys. We just, we just need to love. Everyone just needs to love. And we need to go together. We all need to hold each other's hands and go together and sing kumbaya. No, that's not just, the, it's not reality. It's literally not reality. Again, I'm not throwing that away because be kind, be respectful, you know, help people out, help people up, give people a hand up. We rise and lifting others, all that stuff. But like, you know, not everyone can come. 
That's what she said. Just not not everyone wants to come. That's what she said. Not everyone wants to do the work to come. That's what she said. That's what she said. So, you know, and then there are guys like you who really want to go, who really want to reach that top. And dude, I don't want to be left out. I've always said that before. I don't want to be left out. And I want to be, you know, at a large, at the top. I want to be at the top of whatever field, you know, I want to be, you know, doing all the fun stuff, being creative in my field, being with the other top people in that field. And that drives me, that motivates me. So, you know, I just don't want to throw that away because I don't want to hate anybody, you know? We don't have to. We can go together. For those people who, who actually want to go together, we can hold each other's hands and fucking go together. But if they, if you, and for the people who don't want to come, that was something I had to learn. I just go, oh, they don't want to come. Hey, man, do your own thing. Do your own thing, man. Um, stay in your own lane. Do your own thing. I'm not going to judge that. But um, that's kind of where that competition that's kind of where I was coming with that competition thing and then that duality of being able to use it but also holding it back so I don't have this massive ego and just, you know, steamroll over everything. I don't care about your invitations to hang out. I don't want to see my family. I don't want to do anything for anybody else. It's Marshall's time. Like, you know, got to gotta keep that in check. But, you know, that's really it. That's all I've, that's all, that's all I've been uh, dealing with or thinking about for the past few weeks and that's what I'm kind of working on is all that stuff, you know. Just keep going, keep having these good mornings and working, feeling fulfilled, checking off my list and exhausting myself so then I don't have those anxious thoughts in the evening and I can relax and go to sleep. And then also using that competition competition is not only nos, but goddamn fuel. That shit can wake me up in the morning. And then for myself, it doesn't have to be malevolent thought or, or, or I want to crush you. I just want to be there too, you know? I just don't want to be left behind. And um, that'll motivate the hell out of me. So that's it for me. Thank you guys for tuning in to this episode of the Marshall Kramer Show. And, uh, you know, use that competition and um, exhaust yourself. So hopefully you don't have those anxious worries at night like I do. So until next time, take care, my friends. And scoot boot. Give me my blanket back. And toodaloo. Oh, no. Give me my blanket back. Anxiety creeps up on me. Is this how it's supposed to feel?